Happy Sabbath, everyone, and welcome back to the Study 7 podcast. We are your hosts, Jerron and Chelsea. And our guests for tonight are Pastor Haynes, who is currently mm-hmm. the Personal Ministries, Community Services, and Possibilities Ministries Director of the ECC. Mm-hmm. You got a big title. Big title. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you, Pastor, for joining us. And we also have Brother Stefan Pitt, who is hailing from the Greens SDA Church. Thank you for joining us, Stefan. And he's no wearing problem. green as well, <laughs> repping all the way. So today we're looking at Lesson 11, Longing for God in Zion. Now, before we get into the lesson, let's have a word of prayer and Pastor Hens will answer you to give us that prayer. Sure. Father, we thank you so much for many blessings. God, we thank you that you are so good, you are so great. And Father, tonight as we come, as we discuss I pray, God, that your word will continue to sink in all of our hearts and that we will grow stronger, we will grow deeper in your word. Bless us and continue, God, to do exceeding abundant for all of us, for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 So we're continuing our deep dive into the Psalms, looking at Lesson 11, which Mm -hmm. is entitled Longing for God in Zion. Mm -hmm. And the memory text comes from Psalm 84, verses 2, which says, My soul longs, yes, even faints for the course of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. And Sabbath section of the lesson sort of puts the title of the lesson as well as the memory text into Mm -hmm. context. Mm -hmm. So in summary, it notes that the songs of Zion are joyful hymns that celebrate the beauty of Zion and the sovereignty of the Lord who reigns from his holy mountain. These Psalms praise the merits of the Lord's house and express love for the sanctuary. Many were composed by the sons of Korah, who were temple musicians and gatekeepers, and thus they had a first-hand experience of the blessedness of God's house. Zion symbolizes God's living presence among his chosen people, Israel. God reigns from Zion and founded his temple there, making it a place of divine blessings and refuge. Zion, Jerusalem, and the sanctuary are often mentioned interchangeably, Mm -hmm. representing God's work of salvation. The blessings of Zion extend to the ends of the earth, showcasing God's universal grace and ownership of all creation. And even starting here, we mentioned that God reigns from Zion and founded his temple there, making a place of divine blessings and a refuge and how it represents God's work of salvation. And the lesson had asked this question later down, but I I thought we could could sort of just think about it here. Um, How do we take the spiritual and the theological principles that centered on God's people in Zion, a literal place in Jerusalem, and applied them to the church and its mission to the world. But what what Trump told that I mean was the fact that the, the psalmist saying about how he longs for mm-hmm. and how he faints after, you know, and the, you know, it sent off the, the like bulb in my head. You know, I mean, this 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 psalmist really really wanted to to be at church, to yeah. be in the sanctuary, yeah. to you know that drive, not not a chore, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not, not a chore, not something routine or that you come to do or you you can't wait until you leave. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can't wait. You're, yes, you tick the box, you went to church and so, but here's the deal. They, they, uh, he went and was so overjoyed at going along it, knowing that central part, that central part of, of finding God, grace. And that's the amazing thing that we have, you know, have with God too, uh, understanding even here presently that, that we have even amidst all these things that we have a god that's vibrant what i got yeah. what i got um host i got a vibrancy of god you know that yeah. vibrancy yeah anybody else had any thoughts i guess i wanted to when pastor hans was yeah. saying you know you go to church because you have that drive yeah. and he's longing yeah. to go do you think like a lot of young people have that drive or that longing and if no if the answer is no what do you think why are we not in that position to have that longing Okay, it, it is um, in terms of you, you're not just going just to get, but mm-hmm. you're going, you know, to be part of. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and it, it starts from even before you get there. Okay. So they have to connect even before, you know, before mm-hmm. you get there. And I'm just being, being part of something, you know, like I am part of uh, many groups. I support <laughs> many clubs. And so and you have that drive, you know, you yeah. have, you just want to be because you are, you are a part of something that is amazing, that is, that is big. So the, you know, all of us, you know, all of us, even as adults, and I always remember this, that uh, even raising my children, they're big now, they're 20, 22 now, so big, yeah. big, again, big and grown. But the, I cannot be, if I'm not excited about going to church, yeah. how, how on earth I get to, to be excited, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. So, so my, my excitement, my, my thing for them, not only for me, but also to mirror to them that the excitement, the drive, the, I want to get there, they're watching too. And if I don't want to go, you feel well, is you know, they would also catch it as well. Yeah. You don't think that um, 
what you mentioned yeah. has a part to play in the whole aspect of going to church. When you mentioned um, that you don't only go to the sanctuary to get, yeah. but you go to actually to give yeah. as well correct, and to be correct. a part of. So yes. I think that a lot of persons have the perception that they go to church to be blessed, but they don't understand that sometimes their presence may actually be contributing to blessing somebody um, yeah. somebody else good right? stuff good stuff because you're not we're not ticking boxes mm -hmm. you know and if your relationship with god is just to tick boxes something mm -hmm. wrong or it, it went bam tick mm -hmm. but it is you know it, everywhere you go you know you have Indeed. you have that relationship with him yeah. you know you you know the vibrancy and you just want to be be with him and also be with your brothers and your sisters yeah. i think that was like the same for me mm -hmm. um based on what stefan and pastor hands is saying mm -hmm. so i made a parallel where when i was when i was living in barbados i was active in church mm -hmm. when i went and studied overseas obviously I, I wasn't active in the sense that i didn't have any okay. course anything right. and then i realized i just used to be going and literally going to get because i wasn't doing anything mm -hmm. and i didn't really have that longing per se as yeah. much mm -hmm. as opposed to when i'm involved and i am even if you're not holding posts, even sim something simply as studying a lesson every day, you then have a contribution to make when it's time for Sabbath school. You're not just sitting there like, yeah. yep, okay, okay. But you're like, you know what? This was so interesting. I can't wait to get church and discuss this with the others and mm -hmm. see their perspectives. Sure. So I thought that was, that's nice. Yeah, but here is Chelsea. You know, like, um, even taking it wider, young people, you think, well, young people not reading. And, mm -hmm. and that's, they, they read what they want to read. Mm -hmm. They sure. want to study, they study what they want to study. You know, even in the sporting realm. I mean, the youngsters can quote so much stacks and yeah. they know yeah, this yeah. and they know this about this, but they read, they're into what they, mm -hmm. you know? So what, we, what I'm saying is that, that they can also be into God, into what we do in, you know, in the whole ambit of, of church. Yeah. So I think all that culminates here sort of leads us right into mm -hmm. Sunday section. It says, mm -hmm. which is entitled, A Day in Your Court is Better Than a Thousand. Wow. And we, we started with, in this Sunday session with Psalm 84, a pretty lovely psalm to yep. me. <laughs> it goes like this, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow have found an house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my mm -hmm. King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will still be praising thee. Nice. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. Mm -hmm. Who passing through the valley of Baca, mm -hmm. make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer, give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Mm -hmm. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth, trusteth in thee. And the lesson says that in the sanctuary, worshipers can behold the beauty of the Lord. Nice. Furthermore, the first verse of Psalm 84 that we just read says how amiable or how lovely how beautiful sure. are they tabernacles O lord of hosts so just to start us off here what does it mean really to find beauty in god's presence and how should this shape our own worship and devotion hmm. true like when you come into you know his his house we know that even even in um in isaiah you know where he said that when he when he beheld and um the the even even the doorpost you know, the, the post, they would, they would, you know, the yeah. presence of God, the, the angels singing and, and all that, yeah. you know, knowing well, knowing that the house of God, that God is there, that he's mighty, he's, he's majestic, he's, you know, you know, mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, and, and not being just spellbound by the, by the ambience or the, the, the whole, the whole beauty of, of the, of the church, but knowing that, that God is there, that yeah. a mighty God, almighty God, and a, and, and a, where we can come and where we can come and, and, and worship. So it is, it is that knowing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it also speaks, when you go there, it also speaks to the value that you place on, on your worship. Mm -hmm. Cause if you go in there, you know, mm -hmm. and we have been to many, many play or, or inspiring places before, we, you know, and even the place that we've been to condition our, our, our uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can't keep noise in here. You know what yeah. I mean? This place, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to out of place. Talking about, but going into the presence of God, just amazing. Yeah. I, th I think for me, when I was thinking about it is, it was just thinking about the joy and peace that we feel when we encounter God. Mm -hmm. um, even even if it's just church or maybe early in the morning, you get a devotion. Sometimes mm -hmm. that peace or that joy you feel 
it's like uh, using one of Luen example. If right. you if you met you know like a nice young lady. Oh, that Luen's example. That's his example. That's his go to. That's go to. It's so, yeah, short. So, <laughs> if you get a relationship, you okay. just want to be around this person. Right, right. You're just happy in their presence, Good and stuff. that's what I was thinking in terms of the, the, the beauty of God's presence. Good stuff, yeah. Mm. Um, I don't want to stray away from lesson too much, <laughs> but when y'all said that, then mm -hmm. it leads me mm -hmm. to think right. and to understand that we have a special role to play in that as well mm -hmm. then, because if I am not um, comfortable going into the presence of the Lord in the house, worshiping among the saints, then it says that something is wrong in there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a valid point. Valid. Because I was going to say, well, I don't know if you were looking at it from the same point as me, um, mm -hmm. Stefan, because what I was thinking is sometimes we go into the sanctuary to literally find the presence of God. You went through an okay. awful week, you right. pull it on by a thread <sighs> and then you, but some member, you know, <laughs> and it's like, they might not have the nicest things to say to you or Fine, they might be the miserable right. or, you know, the, the song playing and they're just, they're like picking at everything is like, you know, it makes you feel like, I came here to be at peace and is all of this thing happening. So yeah. that's where I was kind of thinking as well, where... Exactly. Yeah. Because the pastor mentioned something like, when you go to specific places, mm -hmm. then you it alters your behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, as the pastor said, there are certain places that when you go in there, you know, I can't speak loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go to the library, you know, you're not supposed <laughs> yeah. to be playing music. Right. So when you go to the house of the Lord, you should know, well, I should be reverent. You know, mm -hmm. I should... I, there are things that I'm supposed mm -hmm. to do. Exactly. Right. But two things really. Like one, you know, if you go to, ch if you pick up a hammer at home, if M. Lewin would toss a hammer now <laughs> on the set, automatically we want to pong something. Not <laughs> <laughs> if, if you pick up a hammer now, you want to pong. Yeah. Yeah? So if you go to church with that hammer attitude, you always find something to pong. Mm -hmm. Something wrong, this one off, this da 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 da. Sure. Yeah? But if you go, the, but what I like too is the fact that that nothing should really stop you from coming to the house of God, really. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you, the whole bad sinner, come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come because God is there. And that's what he wants sinners. Correct. You know, this is not a parade. This is not a parade for for just all those of, of purity. And nah, nah. Yeah. this is one where you, you're sinful, you messed up, come. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you will find a God who not will reject you, but a God who would who would embrace you. Mm -hmm. You know, leave you feeling not not battered when you when you when you leave. Just yeah. on that last point before we move on, mm -hmm. um, there's a lady that goes to my church. Right. Um, she will always say, and she says this every single Sabbath. Right. She will be like, "How are you doing?" And if you say you're good, bad, whatever, she would always tell you, no matter what, do not leave the church. Oh, that, nice. is, mm -hmm. that is always her. Uh, message to us she, and she even goes further to add like examples if you get a child whatever before marriage just keep coming, coming. to church mm. yeah. you understand because once you break that connection with God then it becomes harder to come back yeah yeah we had a, a sermon at, at church at the time where the guy was basically saying you know, even though you may think this ship is a little rocky, okay. the waves will say much worse. Oh, that's true. Fact, so fact. stick with the ship. You might, you, you, you've got a better chance of making it to safety if okay. you stick with the ship. And in verse 10 and 11, we mostly part the psalm nice. uh, where Sunday's title was taken from. It says, mm -hmm. for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Mm -hmm. So a question coming out here, what sort of priorities does this verse suggest? And how many influence our daily choices and our pursuits at a time where it seems that those who are wicked may be the ones that are prospering. Mm -hmm. Well, fret not yourself because of evil doors. Remember your pastor. Fret not yourself. <laughs> and also too, it, it, it was it was Psalm it was Psalm seventy three uh, with Asaph where he where, where he was so disturbed, he felt mm -hmm. like letting go because yeah. prosperity of of the wicked. But then he then he was shown, you know, in church. Yeah, he got his. He got his aha moment, mm -hmm. all right? In life, you have old moments, you have aha moments. And he got his revelation, not at home sleeping, mm -hmm. not, on, not, not, not just walking through, but he got his aha moment in church. Yeah. So God reveals certain things to you, aha, revert in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But what I, what I like here too in this verse is that the comparative analysis of what I call the, the courts of God versus the, in, in the tents of wickedness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you see, the courts of God will always be, you know, you can always look back and see, oh, the courts of God better than the tents of wickedness. But pray that, that the courts of God will never be 
the tents of wickedness. <laughs> yeah, just like the, just like the just like the prodigal son, the prodigal son came to himself. But what he saw when he compared home mm. versus the pig pen, Correct. he realized that home is much better Correct. than yeah. the pig pen. And all for it, that home becomes a pig pen. Yeah. Right. So let home be home, and you can always see, as you said, Aunt Stefan, you can see the difference. There is a difference being home vis-a-vis -vis mm -hmm. being in the pig pen. Yeah. Cause home is home is where where the blessings, where the blessings are. Um, for me, like as I was saying earlier before we started, um, the verse how it started for a day in the course is better than a thousand. Yes. And I was like, is it missing words? Like a thousand what? A thousand <laughs> yeah. years, a thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Like it was just it just ended abruptly Correct. for me. Um, but then as you were saying, and as Pastor Hins was saying, the parallel between, you know, um, being with God rather than yeah. being plentiful and stuff in, in, in the tents of wickedness and stuff. So for me, I guess how it shapes my worship and my devotion is prioritization. And it's something I struggle with because for me, like I would get up at 3 a.m. at work if I have to do it at 3 okay. a.m. at work. Hmm. But then, like, honestly, <laughs> that is strong. I would do it 3 a.m. anytime. I guarantee you, I don't know what you get. <laughs> <laughs> but then you see me, because you see me coming back in <laughs> when it's like six and I finished work. Yeah. Um, but then for me, like, I find it so difficult because then it's like, well, Chelsea is time to get and do devotion and sometimes like i find i put my work i right. had a devotion and then before i know it the whole day went by mm -hmm. and i did not do devotion or anything it was just you know it's just some prayers before some meals so for me it has been i realized introspection i say you know yes um seek ye first the kingdom of god and stuff i'm reading this verse right. or better to spend a day in his courts mm -hmm. but i'm not actually applying it like right. for yeah. me i still seemingly prioritizing the very immediate worldly things mm -hmm. like oh i gotta work i gotta do this i gotta do that and that's something i personally have been struggling with trying to like get that priority sorted mm -hmm. and for me you know like what drew, uh, what what was read being a pastor the 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 way you now is to make church must make sense mm -hmm. that's why i'm getting mm -hmm. to me loud yeah. loudly here that persons when they come that they will get that experience you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or what the what the psalmist it's, got? It's, so, you know, willing to be part of this conversation, no, <laughs> no. That conversation of church would make sense. It got make sense, but yeah, yeah I mean, George, and, and in other words, making the main thing the main thing, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Making the main thing the main thing, which is you see that coming into the to the house of God and being a person said for a day in thy court is better than a, a thousand. thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, getting that experience, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that ex that um that experience. But I guess I'm wondering if. We don't recognize because like as Chester saying she saying she prioritizes work versus maybe devotion yeah. and stuff like that. Like, do we not recognize as the verse says, no good thing will he uphold withhold from them that walk upright? Is it that we don't recognize that there's also well, there's blessings, yeah, doing your work and right. stuff like that. You get the monetary value and stuff like that. There's also value in a actual relationship yeah, with of God. Course. I think sometimes we don't really bank on that part of the thing. Solid. Mm -hmm. All right, yes, you I, I, I give a talk. I give a talk. At, um, I think the insurance, the it's called Barifa, Barifa, mm -hmm. uh, the insurance and, um, and financial um, persons here in Barbados. And um, what came to me was, you know, we focus a lot on bottom line, Stefan. Mm -hmm. This is the bottom line. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can't have a bottom line before the top line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we focus on the bottom line, but there must be a top line. Correct. Yeah. Right. So, so the top line would, would then influence mm -hmm. your bottom line. And, and that is the, I also realized too, that there is what we call, you know, we look at emotional intelligence, that, yeah. that new buzz, buzz phrase. And, <laughs> and, it is, and, and it makes sense. But also there is a, what I call the integrity intelligence. Integrity, in, integrity intelligence, where that, you see build, businesses topple, they fall, and they, what I call, they, they suffer from the Humpty Dumpty settings. Mm. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't, can't build them back again. Why? Yeah. Because of something like greed and dishonesty. Mm. Lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't fall because of the acumen and, the, you know, lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, see, so the whole thing, you know, sometimes we can focus on our bottom line, but then there's a top line. And the top line has to be our focus, our focus on God. Because focusing on God then would influence the yeah, cool, yep. influence your, your, bottom, your bottom line as well. Yeah. And I guess one of part of the top line is this whole idea of peace. <laughs> yes. So, we'll yes. go to Monday session, pray yes. for peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, what could be more sort of fitting title nowadays than for peace in Jerusalem? Sure, right. I see yep. no more. So in this <laughs> section, we reflect on Psalm 122. 
Absolutely. Um, one that we hear quite regularly, well, at least the first verse, I should mm-hmm. say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And it continues, our feet shall stand within the gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set the, of, sorry, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be in thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will say now, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. And this psalm seeks to reflect on the significance of Jerusalem as the center of worship and justice, where the tribes of Israel gather to praise God. But in verse 6, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And the lesson made an important point. It said, Jerusalem could be the city of peace only if peace existed between God and his people Mm -hmm. and among God's children themselves. The psalm teaches us that the prayer for the well-being of the community of faith should be the main subject of the prayers of God's children because only the strong and united people of God can proclaim the good thing, the good tidings of God's peace and salvation to the world. So Mm -hmm. I guess my question is, outside of prayer, what are the practical, practical ways that we can strive for harmony among God's people, among us as God's people? You mean across denominations or within our church? Or within, our church across denominations, either. Um, I guess within the Adventist church, I know sometimes we have generational divides mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and something we've done practically at my church with the youth is kind of trying to have older people do programs with us oh, nice. casually nice. so nice. that, you know, um, we get to see them in a more relaxed setting. They yeah. get to know us in a relaxed setting. They can appreciate our ways. We can appreciate their ways because, you know, they may have a certain way of thinking and stuff. Um, to me, that's like, that's structured in a sense, but it's yeah. also, you could do natural things as well. To me, we are social beings. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have to necessarily gravitate to our own age group or people that we think like for me i like to meet with different people especially people with different cultures and stuff i think that helps us become more i don't know if tolerant is the right word yeah because i don't I guess want to get, get a better understanding, understanding. yeah better understanding yeah. yeah of how people think and, and their point of view and stuff so for me like meeting people having an open view and every time i encounter someone because i think naturally growing up in a church you kind of grow up with certain subconscious judgment and bias of people Mm -hmm. but then how i like to approach things is i realize even if i wasn't on this earth christ was gonna die for that said person even if i wasn't here so it's not about me so it's like whenever i see someone i try to see to the best of my ability how god would view them through his lens so if jesus had to encounter this person right now what would his reaction be to Mm -hmm. judge or to be like oh they do something different from me or just to get to know them yeah so that's how i try to approach it while i was in south africa i went to a, a youth youth summit and what is what is so just blew my mind in terms of the what I call the intergeneration connection. Mm. The um, it was this part of Africa, and what they did. We were in South Africa in Joburg, but then they have persons from all, all around, from Ghana, mm-hmm. from, from all. Of, but, but what what they did? They had like a thousand persons that they traveled with, a thousand youth delegates, but they brought three thousand adults mm-hmm. to intentionally connect with these thousand yeah. mm-hmm. because. What was what was in the f- uh, forefront of the minds of the young people? That you see these elderly, these the older person, they built the roads that they're walking on. So so to diss them, just you know, is to you know to, to put off mm-hmm. a whole set of things. Yeah, they build it, learn yeah. from the experience. Yeah. You, you know, you don't have you don't have to burn to learn. You know, you can learn from the burning of, of other people. Life is too short yeah. to learn from your own your own burning. That right. True. So that connection there, it can force the unity and also to what well, I learned to of acceptance. You know, like. You know, my personality different to Stefano, mm-hmm. right? But this world don't need everybody to be sanguine, everybody to be extrovert. Mm-hmm. No, the world be yeah. too hyper, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, need you, <laughs> I need you to be you and you to be you. And it calls for acceptance, you yeah. know, and um, serious. And, and the unity thing is, we pray about it, yeah? But we got to participate, you know, we don't yeah. just, we just yeah. praying. And we got to get up off our knees and participate too. And accept um, Stefan, Stefan may be, may be extrovert, mm-hmm. you know, Chelsea may be an introvert. Accept them for, you know, peace, power yeah. is hot, peace, power is cold. Right. <laughs> you know, you know, it is, man. But you have to, a unity, you got to participate, man. You got to step in, you know. Yeah. My young comments this thing called the ripple effect of one. 
you know, if you drop a water, drop a, a pebble or anything in the water, it's a ripple. Mm-hmm. But if you don't drop it in, it can't make a ripple. Mm-hmm. So we can't ripple if you don't. You yeah, got to jump okay. in, man. Yeah. Accept, accept, accept person. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And I, I guess for me, I guess what comes out of this whole idea <laughs> is just be kind. Yeah, man. Um, just yeah. and the Bible tells us we remind yeah. to be kind and, and compassion to want to forgive each other. And I think that I think that's one of the big thing that the big things that can help to build, build harmony, just being kind to one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sir, that, that that kindness thing needs a lot of you know, you have to have a relationship with God, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Be serious because it's because sometimes some people some people you, you try to help them, you try to help them and you see people you try to help, you know, diss you or, or put you in, you know, mm-hmm. dragging you, trolling you. But you just you help them, but you're supposed to be kind. Turn the other cheek. This, <sighs> that, you know what I mean? It's serious. So, so the yeah, need. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you're right. But, so the psalm, psalmist was speaking highly of God's um, righteousness, mm-hmm. but also God's love. Yeah. You speak of God's peace, but also God's justice, mm-hmm. and they all exist. You know, His His love and His justice all exist, all exist in in harmony together. So when he, when He exhibits justice, is done in love. Mm-hmm. When it exhibits love, is done in injustice. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, lastly, before John move on, he said, "You said something about the about peace." I can't remember what you said, but it led me to think that the whole aspect of a leader mm-hmm. is also extremely important. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He will not like me to put him on his spot, but he can put him on his spot. Okay. Uh, Jason Reed is my pastor now. Your pastor, yes. And he can see a total, totally different um, district. Well, mm. I have not been um, to the other churches okay. as much, mm-hmm. but I know that a change in behavior has happened because of him in some persons for sure. Good stuff. Like he is, he's that kind of person to the entire district. And I think that he was a great help to the district of um, South Central. Because uh, you know, you know, you call that you call that even emotional intelligence because people take their cue, emotional cue mm-hmm. from the leaders. leaders. Serious. Mm. Because I was on, a, I was, I was um, flying to Tobago, flying mm. from Trinidad and Tobago a couple weeks ago. Mm. You know, your plane was shaking, shaking a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, like nobody came. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like never, never big lot of panic. Yeah. Right, but shaking. Right. Because like when, when the pilot the pilot came on and we we're just going through, you know this and you know it's feel you know it feel good you know it feel yeah. good you know so when the pilot started to panic you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> right so so Stefan you know Pastor Reed, my good friend you know and people take the emotional cue mm-hmm. yeah right so they they're watching you and they take the guidance mm-hmm. as well Correct. you know yeah so that's that's cool Correct. that's cool so uh, on Tuesday now we. Mm-hmm. Look at Zion, the, the home of all nations. Mm-hmm. And here our attention is drawn to Psalm 87, which celebrates Zion as God's chosen and beloved city where his temple is founded, signifying his sovereign supremacy over the world. It highlights Zion's majesty and superiority over the gathering places of God's people. True worship is affirmed in God's chosen place and prescribed way. The glory of Zion draws nations to God, extending his kingdom to the whole world. Nations are symbolically born in Zion receiving new identity and privileges as God's children. This psalm points to the salvation of both Jews and Gentiles, nice. uniting in Christ's redeeming ministry, echoing biblical themes of God's kingdom spreading to fill the earth. And the lesson answers this question. It answers how does Zion's readiness to adopt all people find its fulfillment in the church's great commission to preach the gospel to every nation? And how does that fit in also with our call to preach the three angels messages. Correct. Everybody, all in, all inclusive. Yeah. And um, that is, it is, and that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty, beauty mm-hmm. of the gospel. You know, it is, it is for, it is for everyone and the power that it can, you know, it can, it can yeah. reach, it can reach everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, with that in mind that, you know, this, some, this, this one thing can, can reach all the different, um, different, people's groups around the world. Yeah. It's, just, it's just amazing. It speaks to an, an amazing and a, and a wonderful God. I guess one of the issues I think people find, especially, uh, I guess, spreading the gospel yeah. is personalities, mm-hmm. dealing with personalities. So as you said, Stefan might be intro- introverted. Yeah. You might find it difficult to, to go out 
and think it's not necessarily he doesn't want people coming to the church but his personality doesn't allow for him to go and think so how do we deal with he's spread in a different way i think each person has their ministry so let's say stefan is introverted but he is good at singing in a praise team or whatever. Stefan, you sing? <laughs> nah, Stefan is sing. In a group, in a group. Sing, sing, in a group. As a group singer. Oh, exactly. Okay. He sing at Grace. He sing at Grace. He sing at Grace, man. He sing at Grace. So, you know, in his own ministry, in his own way, he can actually be spreading the, the gospel. I think it is because sometimes we are conditioned to see spreading the gospel as one way. Mm-hmm. Go out with priority tracks. Mm-hmm. No offense to the priorities. Mm-hmm. But no, no offense, we, we see that mm-hmm. as go and do that knock on somebody's mm-hmm. door. But it is, to me, with technology, there's so much more we could be doing with spreading the gospel. And it does not have to be in the form of even something written. It can be music ministry. It could be podcast. There's so much. people We consume content so many different ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the world is so good at it that, like, I would be like, oh, I'm on Netflix watching something. No. Oh, Netflix, run an audio podcast. Let me listen to this. No. Oh, they're on Instagram live. And, and before you know it, I consume all these different things. But mm-hmm. then... The church still want me knocking. Hey, Charles, here's a party. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but, oh, we still doing this? I remember when I used to do this. My great, great, great. Okay, well. And I said, do you have a, anything digital? Well, not yet. So to me, it's to recognize that everybody has a talent. That's my thing. Introvert, extrovert, whoever. The church needs to be able to tap into those unique talents and be able to spread the gospel through those talents, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so true. So I true. think there's also the, the challenge that persons do not handle rejection well or mm, don't yeah. like to yeah. be rejected so when we go out in the field and mm, there's some know. person who just don't want to hear you don't open the door you feel you, you go to the house and you see them there hiding behind the curtain they've been home yeah exactly <laughs> then persons um tend to feel very dejected yeah. Yeah. from that but i actually like doing it so i mm-hmm. was in i went to field work uh, with ephesus church one time when okay. I was when I was a little younger, not little a lot younger, younger, younger. <laughs> <laughs> and there was this guy in the field. We met him mm-hmm. and we were speaking, and he stopped us in the middle of witnessing to him. And he was like, "You really believe that this world start with two people? Like this guy could not see that the world would start with two people." Okay. He said, "You know how long it would take mm-hmm. for two people." To multiply, okay. To multiply, mm. yeah. and multiply. How much people we got on this planet today? Uh, we gave him a rough estimate. And he was like, "So you think that in this amount of years, mm-hmm. uh, he just totally could not believe in the Bible simply mm. because that like, he don't believe that the world started start with two people." And and that was very, um, it was very negative um, for some persons. But I found it like interesting because yeah. there are some persons that would just hear oh the world start with adam and eve and they would just go along with it yeah. you understand yeah. but he's actually questioning it no that would lead me and it would build me up as a person to as a, to as a christian to go and look for mm-hmm. answers to then go back to him and you know good stuff Stefan. yeah but you know in this life people always ask you to do something look i mean and a big tech man you know when they go on YouTube, boom, 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 boom. Everybody asks you, do you like the video yet? Give me a chance. You know what I mean? Give me a <laughs> Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, blah, 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 blah. So uh, don't care where you go. Yeah. You are told to do something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, But as you said, Chelsea, it is simply, you know, your spiritual gifts. I know mm-hmm. Pastor Roosevelt Haynes is big on this, on spiritual gifts, mm-hmm. having people in their spiritual gifts, they, you know, even in their comfort zones, but something you got to go out your comfort zone sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but, but understanding that you have these spiritual gifts. Let me give you an example. I was coming from a funeral. This was the most traumatic funeral I ever did. One of them. I was so tired. I was so spent. I mean, tired, spent. I witnessed the mom collapse. She collapsed three times. Beer ball and drama. I mean, serious stuff. So I pulled up, drove down, drove up from the uh, cemetery, pulled up to a gas station. Turn up the AC, turn up the radio, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And rock back. Just spend 15 minutes just decompressing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was a lot, you know? Yeah. And this lady, you know, a senior lady, you know, that people might think, well, she's not into into the technology or whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. But she just WhatsApp me. She said, Pastor, whatever you're going through at present, 
I just WhatsApp you, you know, in, in a way, you know, yeah. to let you know, you know, this like that in the capsule letter. It's not knowing. Yeah. I just <laughs> she figured well, that's like, that to get your attention. Let's just throw that. Yeah, you know? he's like, <laughs> <laughs> just let you know well, that God is God is with you. I'm praying for you, and that 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 really inspired me. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and she did not for me, but for others. Mm -hmm. You know, in in the community, so just look. I mean, as um, was read out that I am in charge of community services. And I don't tell them what to do. You're serious. I don't tell them. Yeah. I tell them that do something meaningful. Mm. Serious. Just do something meaningful. You know, and we got we have a program called Twinkle Twinkle. Mm -hmm. And all I'm asking them to do, Stefan, is go and intervene and have and just connect with some person mm -hmm. and make their eyes go twinkle twinkle. Mm -hmm. mm. Right? So all the all the things, but but be mindful young people in life, people are people tell you what to do. Like, yeah. share, subscribe, press the notification yeah. bell. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, before we move on, yeah. there the the beginning of Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Um, I asked what does what makes Zion such an esteemed place. Um, I would just like to hear the thoughts on what makes Zion an esteemed place. God, mm -hmm. God is. But you know mm -hmm. uh, where he is, you know where he is would be mm -hmm. would, be, would be esteemed. You know, his, his presence alone, boom, yeah. you know, his presence alone. Mm. Not just the topography and geography, and so the fact, boom, that he's 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 there, that he chose that, that make it esteem. Mm. And I also yeah. think the the sound also has the fact that mm. it, the the temple is on Mount Zion. It's okay. so, sorry, that is on a, a high place. Yes, and yes. I think that yes. is the idea that the the psalm is trying to depict that it is above everything else. Correct. Yeah. That is what that is what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Think yeah. because from. Doing a little extra research, um, mm -hmm. Bethel was also in House Jerusalem. of God, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Shiloh was also mm -hmm. in. Yeah, but Shiloh yeah, was yeah. destroyed by God. Yeah. Uh, and Bethel actually met House of God. So, like, yeah. mm -hmm. what would distinguish yeah, I had Zion that same. Yeah. from <laughs> Bethel yeah. and Shiloh? Yeah, it's, right. it's position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, on Wednesday, we look at the, the safety and the peace of Zion. And here we f reflect on another familiar psalm. Psalm 46, mm -hmm. one of my my faves. And this psalm seemingly describes a very troubled world. Mm -hmm. The psalm paints a picture of war and conflict, especially using description of natural mm -hmm. calamities. And while it seems like this world has rejected God, mm -hmm. God is still in the midst of this world. Mm -hmm. And in verse 9, we see that God brings all of the conflict to an end and extinguishes all the tools of destruction that the wicked nations use to bring oppression to the world. And of course, this reflects the great hope that we as Christians have, which will occur at the second coming of Jesus. But until then, we still have to bear with all the trials of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So how do we learn to have that peace and to trust God amid a world that indeed has so much turmoil? Well, based on what was um, said in either, I think it was Monday or Sunday section, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the psalmist said he would rather be a doorkeeper. Sure. Yeah. Rather than to be in the tents of wickedness, like that is so profound to me because <laughs> we here in this room is saying that somebody will rather stand up by this door Correct. and just watch me all day, every day, rather than to go in a place where there's just wickedness. Sure. So him being at the door um, signifies that he's going to be seeing just all good. He's not inside um, yeah. experiencing the good, but he yeah. just from seeing the good, mm. that would in turn um, alter the mind to do good things, you know, say good things, be a part of good things. Just stuff. But then if you just see wickedness all day, that's Correct. all you can know. Yeah. But it says some in verse one, God is our refuge and strength. strength. A very what? Present. Present. present help. Right? And, and that is it. Present help in trouble. Yeah. If it was past, if it was just, he, he just passed, it would mean well that our our faith, our experience is just a relic, yeah. you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, just, just in the past, but it is, it is present, mm -hmm. you know, right? And this present will be even, even leading into the future, Correct. right? And that, that's give, that would give us the hope that yes, he's in the past, in the present, and also in the future. And mm -hmm. this, this Psalm is also, it was it's said to be Martin Luther's um, Psalm, you know, this, this okay. is the Psalm where yes. we use, he used this Psalm to, to really buoy his spirit up. Yeah. You know, in the trials and um, that the troubles, troubles that he had, so God is God is present, yeah, and real, yeah. And even and going on from what you said, the fact that He worked so well in the past, yeah, mm -hmm. means that He will work in the present as well as in the future. So Correct. even though all the turmoil and everything in the world is happening, we can know that God is still 
is still there. And uh, yes, but I think the last, it's the last amazing, line yeah. it says, "The Lord of Hosts is with us. The yes. God of Jacob mm -hmm. is He's our, our refuge. refuge." Amazing, man. Yeah. Uh, he also, I, I did, I did some um, some research, Stefan. I, I was doing something on the mind, mm -hmm. right? And I, so I went on Chat GPT. Not, not, not to just to give me. <laughs> I, I asked Chat GPT. <laughs> What is your mind? <laughs> what is Chad GPT sent me? Um, sorry, I don't have I don't have a mind. He just he just made up of al algorithms. <laughs> and I said, but but check the amazing part that that um, that God has made us with with, with an amazing Correct. mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. That even even our mind, even our, our mind, and uh, even even our brain itself, that we can we generate what twenty three watts. That we can have enough watts to put to actually turn on a light bulb, make yeah. a light bulb um, glow. So we have that, we have that mind and it yeah. says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That, that humility, mm -hmm. but knowing well that God is, God is with us. And young people, we have to know that God is for real, okay. serious. Yeah. So all these things around, if all the, you know, that I, I didn't grow up in, in this age, you know what I mean? Y'all are in this, in this age and all these, all these uh, distractions, all these lures and everything that, that, yeah. will, that will pull you. But God is for real, mm -hmm. right? And you have to know this. This psalm um, speaks loudly to uh, God is for real. He's not just when you fail an exam, you know what I mean, or when you want pass one step, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you remember I spent your study, yeah. Well, you know, you study Chelsea, yeah. you study at all, and you yeah. want, you yeah. want, you know, you want a miracle. Oh, you want, you want praying, you want anointing, you want kind of thing, you want study, you know what I mean? That was me almost every time. <laughs> yeah, every time. Yeah. 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 But but God, but God, but little things, right? Yeah. Little things, man. Trust him. Mm -hmm. Trust him that God is God is for real. God is for real. And we know we have a God that is immovable, yeah. like Mount Zion on Thursday. Nice. And the psalmist compares those who trust in the Lord to Mount Zion, symbolizing steadfastness and strength. Despite the prevalence of evil, the certainty of divine protection inspires profound trust. Mm -hmm. However, the success of the wicked can tempt God's children Yet departing from the Lord leads to insecurity. The call is to remain immovable in faith, mm -hmm. trusting in God's goodness, even amidst incomprehensible mystery, mysteries. Ellen G. White emphasizes the limitations of human understanding and encourages trust in God's revealed word, despite the mysteries of his providence. And I guess just to bring it down to a close, how do we start to develop that immovable faith in God? Well, knowing that he, that knowing he exists forever and ever, and um, mm. especially in this changing world, you know, uh, especially uh, Steph, you know, your world is your phone. Your phone always change. People laugh. The youngsters laugh at my phone. It's a pasta. <laughs> Aha, you got iPhone ten? No, I call it ten. They said, nah, pastor, not 10, it's XR. It's X, XR and 10 are the same, same thing, thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so don't try to, no. Uh, pass, I got 15, I got this. But I tell them I have credit. Mm. <laughs> I have data, I have data. Right? <laughs> don't get it twisted. I have data, I, I can make a call the way I can you, right? But everything's always changing. Yeah. Host, everything's always changing. Uh, every three months, something mm. always updated. Every, every, every few weeks, again, an uh, update on my phone, we're updating the software. So this life is always changing. Yeah. But realize well that God, God is always there, man. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't, he wouldn't move and people are always shifting. So I always encourage my young people, Steph, you and all my hosts and all them listening, all those in the um, waiting room and all, all <laughs> wide <laughs> audience, television audience. Serious, make sure that you have, you got to understand that you, you either have a circle of friends or a cage. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And are they your circle or your cage? cage? Mm -hmm. yeah. Serious, because you want God is don't care what we put what we'll push against him. He's 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 solid for you. Mm. But check in your life the people that you think well, my hey, they roll with me this, but then how, how they shift? Yeah. Something happened. They shift. They troll. They didn't stand up for you. They gone quiet. You know they leave you on scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God will God will always be there, rocking, holding you down. And that is amazing because God will never leave you nor forsake you. So reading reading the psalm. It showed me well that just like Mount, Mount Zion would not move, God will not, he will not move. Mm -hmm. mm. That's profound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we can take that as our closing comment. <laughs> and I just want to thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Pastor Haynes, for being here tonight. And I guess, Stefan, could you give us that closing prayer, please? Yeah, for sure. Heavenly Father, we want to thank thee for the lesson study that we've just had. We want to ask that you... Um, help us to continue to trust in you where there is no trace 
of you. I want to ask that you help us to also be um, the living examples to those out there who are looking on and help us to at least be drawn closer to you in each day in every single thing that we put our minds to. May it be centered by you, centered around you, so that in the end that we know that there are blessings from you and not just worldly blessings, dear Lord. So again, be with us now and be with us forevermore is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thank you, Stefan, again. Thank, thank you, man. You, thank you. Pastor Hins. And thank you to all our viewers for thank joining you. us on the podcast tonight. Um, please like the video, subscribe. <laughs> 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 yes, we, we are telling you what yes, to do. Correct. Right? Comment, share with a friend, you know, all these nice things that you do for other YouTubers. And we look forward to seeing you next week as we look at lesson 12 worship that never ends. Once again, have a happy Sabbath and God bless.